Hello, everyone. This is uh, group six. Uh, our topic today is uh, evaluating effectiveness of CVSS based metrics on cloud computing. Uh, I'm Wen Hao Zhang, and also there were my teammates Yun Wei Zheng and Guan Yu Wang, also Yu Xuan Wang. Um, so let's first go to introduction of this topic. Oh, next slide, please. So um, cloud computing is widely used in many areas this nowadays, and more and more uh, workloads are moving to cloud. So security in cloud computing is increased. Uh, in 2017, over 14,000 new vulnerabilities were discovered in cloud system. So determine which vulnerabilities are essential is a key question for cloud security and also is key question for the cloud administrators. Um, the common vulnerability scoring system, which is CVSS, is often used to de determine which vulnerability have high risk. And this system are you, you are used to use uh, for a uh, general um, software system. N nobody, I mean, no research before which uh, research this system uh, in cloud system. So we want to check if this scoring system metrics are compatible with cloud system. Um, so next. Uh, all right, thanks, Wenhao. So I'll provide some background of our study. So the common vulnerability scoring system, which is shortly as CVSS, is an open framework for communicating the characteristics and the severity of software vulnerabilities. That is among, for example, entities and researchers, the engineers, so on and so forth. And the CVSS has three groups of metrics, which are, you know, the first is the base group, which consists of metrics like attack vector, uh, attack complexity, uh, privilege required, so on and so forth. Uh, metrics in this base group depicts the intrinsic characteristics of vulnerabilities that are invariant to time and context. And uh, the next group of CVSS is actually the temporal group, which consists of metrics like exploit code maturity, uh, radi redemption level. Uh, metrics in the temporal group depicts the characteristics of the vulnerabilities that vary with time of the software product lifecycle. And uh, the third group is called the environment group, which includes, uh, for example, CR, IR, AR, so on and so forth. And metrics in this group depicts the characteristics of vulnerabilities that depends on the software's application context. So you, you can see that this is a big family. And in our study, we, we focus our interest of study to be on evaluating the compatibility and the effectiveness of the uh, metrics in the base group uh, that, you know, when applying to cloud computing. And we will see more details when we you know, going down the slides. And next slide, please. Thanks, Glenn. For CVSS, many people have studied it. In 2006, Karen, Peter, and Sasha published an article to introduce and analyze the original CVSS. In this article, they gave a detailed description of the early generation CVSS, include its three metric groups, how to generate the score, and the advantages and the disadvantages of it. Later, after the release of CVSS 2, Carrie and Peter analyzed new version of CVSS. In their work, Carrie and Peter analyzed uh, the improvements made by CVSS 2 compared with CVSS 1. How these improvements solved the defects when using Vision 1, and what new defects will be encountered when you use CVSS 2. In addition, Lu Yi Wang, Ling Gao et al. analyzed the advantages and disadvantages of CVSS V2, compared with it with some existing improved methods based on CVSS and then props the new vulnerability scoring mechanism based on CVSS v2. There are also some studies on the application of CVSS in cloud systems. Homer's team props the new model for evaluating the prior prioritizing the 
vulnerabilities in cloud systems based on the CVSS and MCDF. Next, please. Okay, next we will discuss the basic metric group of CVSS 3.1. This metric group has six metrics and they can be divided into two categories, exploitability metrics and the impact metrics. We can see this picture, uh, four metrics on the left, attack vector, attack complexity, privileges required and the user interaction belongs to exploitability metrics. Three metrics on the right, integrity, confidentiality, impact, and uh, availability belongs to impact metrics. Scope does not belong to any metric groups. Next. Oh, thanks, Yuxuan. So I will introduce uh, the first basic metrics uh, attack vector. So this matrix reflects the context by which vulnerability exploration is possible. So this matrix value will be larger the more remote an attacker can be in order to exploit the vulnerability, uh, I mean, vulnerable components. The assumption is that the number of potential attackers for an vulnerability that could be exploited from across the network is larger than the number of potential attackers that could explore a vulnerability requiring physical access to a device and therefore warrants a greater base score. Um, next slide, please. So uh, there are four uh, vulnerable components in this matrix. The first one is network. This uh, a vulnerable component is bound to the network stack and the set of possible attackers extends uh, beyond the other options. List. So uh, adjust, uh, uh, and the second one is adjacent. The vulnerable component is bound to the network stack, but the attack is limited at a protocol level to a logical adjacent topology. So the third one will be a local one. This one, the well component is not bound to the network stack and the attacker path is where read, write, executive uh, capabilities. So the last one will be the physic. So this one, the, the attack requires the attacker to physically touch or manipulate the vulnerable components. Um, so for the first network and other Jensen, this, this two uh, vulnerability can be used to determine the ability of uh, uh, this cloud system to defend the um, denial of service. For and a local and a physical, uh, this two is often um, can used to uh, adjust, I mean, uh, reflects the ability of the cloud system physical uh, defending the attack. Uh, next slide, please. So we think this matrix is compatible with the cloud system. Since the denial of service, I mean, DOS is a major vulnerability issue of the cloud system. And this matrix can be used to score the ability of cloud system for defending denial of service. Also, this matrix can be used to score the vulnerability of server issue of the cloud system. So, uh, this is uh, analyzed for this uh, matrix. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the second metric I want to introduce is attack complexity. This metric reflects the complexity of the attacker to employ the vulnerability to attack the software or system. Uh, it has two metric values, low and high. If a target allows an uh, attacker to attack at all. And before attacking it, the attacker doesn't need to collect any information about the target or target information and doesn't need to make any preparation for the attack. Its attack complexity is low. If the attack complexity of a vulnerability is high, 
it means that the target won't allow the attacker to successfully attack at all. If the attacker wants to successfully attack, he needs to make a certain amount of preparation for vulnerable components. Next, please. Attack complexity is also suitable for evaluating vulnerabilities in cloud computing. We can find that many companies have vulnerabilities in their cloud service, such as Apple's Apple. In 2018, it was found to have 55 vulnerabilities, including 10 high-risk vulnerabilities. Their attack complexity is low, and the attack conditions required are few. NVD released many vulnerabilities in VMware virtual machines this year. The attack complexity of all high-risk vulnerability is low. Uh, next, please. Okay, we think some improvements should be made to the metric value of attack complexity because the description that the metric value of attack complexity is defined as high. There is no quantitative description of the preparations made by the attacker before successful attack. I don't think this is suitable for the cloud computing system. We all know that compared with ordinary system, the cloud computing system manages more data and resource and its complexity is higher. Therefore, I think we should add a metric value of medium between high and low. And the quantities of the preparation work to be done by the attacker should be described more accurately. Uh, next, please. Okay. The third metric is privileges required. This metric reflects the level of authority that an actor need to have when successfully exploiting a vulnerability to attack a component. For this metric, it has three metric values, none, low, and high. When the metric value is none, it means that the attacker doesn't need to authorization before launching the attack and it doesn't need to assess my any setting or fails when doing the attack. If the attacker needs to obtain ordinary user privileges, the metric value is low. If an attacker needs to gain full control of the vulnerable component, for example, administrator permissions of the operation system. In this case, the metric value is high. Okay, next. Uh, in the metric, is this metric application to cloud and computer system? Now, let us see a cloud system vulnerability in NVD. Let's see an example. Uh, this vulnerability is about IBM security verify access Docker 10. It could allow a romantic associated attacker to execute any comments on the system by sending a specially crafted request. Now we use PR metric to evaluate it. For this vulnerability, a remote attacker requires privileges. And he also need to send a craft, crafted request to execute arbitrary commands in the system. So according to the determination conditions of metric value, the metric value of PR for this vulnerability is high. And we can see that the metric of private privileges required can be used to evaluate the vulnerabilities of cloud systems. It can clearly define the permission level of attacker to exploit cloud vulnerabilities, and there is no need to adjust to this metric. Okay, next. 
Uh, all right, thanks, Yushan. So I'll take over from here. So the next metric we're going to uh, you know, introduce is the scope in the CVSS system. Um, so it actually refers to the security scope that, uh, you know, which is a terminology. The definition of the security scope is that a, you know, it's a collection of subjects and objects that are under the same security authority. And for, for example, you know, the applications and data on the same computer, they're in the same security scope. Or in other words, you know, you know, different computers that are in the same local area networks can also be considered under the same security scope. And we call this, you know, we call the event that, you know, one of vulnerabilities affects other components that is outside its security, a scope change. So um, the, the scope in the CVSS, CVSS system actually measures the system's capability of containing a vulnerability in a bounded range. So when there's no scope change, the corresponding score is low. And when there is when, when there is scope change, right? And scope score, the metric score is high. And um, so when applying you know, this scope metric to cloud computing, you know, due to the virtualized nature of the cloud computing systems, many components are not actually physically you know, separated anymore. For example, you know, you have an account on the Amnos AWS and someone else has an account on the Amnos AWS, but your part is not actually really physically separate from their part, you know, but you are on the same physical machine, but are just different di virtual machines. So this fact adds complexity to the analysis of security scope and, you know, and it's also scope change, right? So we, re we recommend some adjustments to be made to the scope metric uh, to better evaluate vulnerabilities of cloud systems. For example, the scope metric can be decomposed into sub metrics like the scope on the hardware level, scope on the operating system level, or scope on the software levels. So with these, you know, decomposed sub metrics, the practitioners can, you know, have a, you know, can, can be better gathered to, you know, better analyze the scope that works really well on the, you know, to evaluate the vulnerabilities of cloud computing system. Um, all right, next slide, please. All right, the next metric we want to introduce is the confidentiality impact. So the, the, the confidentiality impact metric measures the system's vulnerability from a aftermath perspective. So it evaluates the impact on the system's intended confidentiality by a successful attack. So when there's no confidential information compromised following a successful attack, the score on the metrics is none. And when there is partial leak of the confidential information, the score is partial. And when there, you know, when the whole confidential information is disclosed, the score is complete. So since we require the same or better confidentiality when using cloud computing systems, we claim that the confidentiality impact metric from CVSS still applies pretty well to evaluating the vulnerabilities of cloud computing systems. All right, next slide, please. Okay, um, my name is Yunmei and I will introduce you three more metrics. Uh, metrics. So the first one is user interaction. Uh, this metrics uh, clarifies the, the requirements for users other than the attacker to successfully comp uh, compromise uh, vulnerable components. This metrics determines whether the vulnerability can be applied separately according to the wishes of the attacker or whether a single user uh, must participate in some way. Uh, when user interaction is not required, the basic score is the highest. Uh, therefore, unlike other metrics, there are only two metrics value for user interaction, none and required. So none means the ability to use a vulnerable system without any user interaction. Uh, required means a successful uh, exploitation of this vulner uh, vulnerability requires the user to take certain measures to uh, exploit the vulnerability. And uh, user interaction metrics uh, is not good to uh, effectively apply to cloud computing system. Reason is simple. In cloud computing systems, 
there is barely uh, user interaction involved in uh, vulnerable components. Most of the activities that are related to interactions in computer uh, in computing systems are service interaction. Um, there is another matrix is integrity uh, in a CBSS system. It means the vulnerability successfully exploited by this indicator uh, refers to the impact of the credibility and uh, authenticity, authenticity of the information. When the effort of the affected, affected component is the highest, the basic score is the highest. Um, high integrity uh, represents a complete uh, loss of integrity or complete loss of protection. Low integrity means uh, data, uh, data modification is possible, but the attacker cannot control the consequence of the modification or the number of modif uh, modifications is limited. Uh, data modification will not have a direct or serious impact on the affected uh, components. Now in uh, integrity, I simply saying that uh, integrity is not impacted by impacted components. Um, so when we consider cloud computing uh, vulnerability, we, we must consider the uh, integrity matrix effort. Usually data is the main concern uh, for cloud computing systems of integrity matrix. Uh, data integrity is one of the most critical uh, elements in any information system. Generally, uh, data integrity means uh, protecting data from unauthorized uh, delay, uh, deletion, modification, or any uh, actions like that. Uh, the management entities access and rights to uh, specific corporate uh, resources can ensure that uh, vulnerable data and services will not be abused and uh, stolen. So data integrity can be easily achieved in a independent system with a single database. Data integrity in an independent system is uh, maintained through uh, database transactions, uh, which is usually done by a, a database management system. And uh, transactions should follow SID uh, 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 properties to ensure data integrity. Uh, most databases support SID transactions and can maintain data integrity. And um, so uh, integrity can be effectively applied to uh, cloud computing systems. Um, and uh, in cloud computing system, uh, also almost everyone can access cloud system service terminals and uh, access data. So there are some technicals to achieve that goals. Uh, like uh, uh, checking data and digital signature, apply uh, digital signature and uh, API standards, uh, monitoring tools, and also backup. So backup is like the most important and the most um, effective means to uh, prevent data from being lost. And uh, this is the, uh, the algorithm to checking data by using square hat function. And you can see the in the very beginning the uh, organization data or data owner and uh, you know uh, path the flow to cloud computing and go to a cloud user. So in the end, if the the result is not is, is mis mismatched, the data has been alert. So if the data is matched, the data has not been alert. That's the result. Um, so there is the one last uh, matrix in CVSS system. It's called availability. So uh, this matrix measure, measures the, the impact of a successful uh, exploit on the availability of affected components. Although the integrity impact measure, measurement applied to the loss of integrity of the data, such like, like information, like uh, files, used uh, by affected component. The measure, uh, measurement refers to the loss of availability of a, uh, effect, affected component itself, such as network services like uh, database, email, something. And uh, so since availability refers to the accessibility of information resources, 
attacks that uh, consume network uh, bandwidth, uh, procedure circles, or disk uh, space can affect the availability of the affected uh, components. When the effect of the affected components is the highest, the basic score is the highest. Like integrated, there are three uh, different values of uh, integrating metrics as well, like high, low, and none. High availability stands for complete loss of the availability for the system. And the low availability uh, means the um, performance or interruption of resources availability is low. And uh, non value uh, is seem like the integrity is means there is no um, impact for the system at all. And um, so cloud availability is really related to cloud uh, reliability. For example, suppose you have an online store that is uh, available 24 uh, 7, but sometimes tracking the checkout button will kick the customer out of the system before they complete the uh, purchase. Therefore, your store may always be available, but if the denying software is unreliable, your cloud uh, products is basically useless. Uh, cloud availability, cloud reli reliability, and cloud security uh, all needs to be combined to achieve high availability. So this means that your products and your service can be access, uh, accessed anytime, anywhere, operates reli uh, reliable as uh, ex expected. And the system can uh, sim seamlessly scale up uh, or down to meet customer needs without loss of performance. Uh, all right, thanks, Yunli. So I'll, I'll take a look from here. So about we presented our study on the effectiveness of the CVSS metrics when applying to cloud computing systems. And here I would like to do some discussion. And so we can see that seven out of the eight metrics of the CVSS still apply, applies effectively to the cloud computing systems. You know, among them, the attack vector the privilege required, the confidentiality impact, the uh, integrity impact, and the availability impact are, the, are directly applicable to cloud computing. And the attack complexity and scope metrics are effective to the cloud computing systems after some adjustment. And the adjustments are due to the higher level of virtualization and complexity of the cloud systems. And so, Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, the CVS metrics has more than 30 years of history and yet still works very well for modern computing paradigms. And this indicates that the, these metrics is well-defined and capture the essence of cybersecurity. And uh, I also want to mention that the CVSS system is ever evolving. So it has added or modified metrics across its older versions from version you know, 1.0, 2.0, all the way to the latest version is 3.1. And it will give, and we can, and from you know, their proposal, we can see that it will give an answer to the challenges in evaluating cloud computing systems and many other newly emerged software and hardware paradigms uh, in the CVSS 4.0. So if you're interested, please feel free to check out their proposals and you, you can find a the uh, proposal of the PowerPoint slide of proposal of CVS 4.0 in our papers reference page. Uh, so uh, next slide, please. All right, so that's that, that, that's, that sums up our presentation today. And if you have questions, you know, please feel free to ask us to leave us a comment or questions on Moodle and we will post our videos and probably probably also the uh, uh, PowerPoint slides uh, on, on the YouTube as well. And uh, that's all for our today's presentation. And thank you for, you know, for, for listening and goodbye.